it's a growing recognition that the inequalities in America are unsustainable. The gap between rich and poor is accelerating, and the only way to improve the lot of the poor in the new economy of the 21st century is not by cutting taxes on the rich, it's not by accelerating economic growth, it's by investing in their skills. In Houston, there are still so many families that can't earn a livable wage. And we think with the right training and connections and frankly awareness, in, in a lot of cases, people just don't know these jobs exist and they don't know the path to get the appropriate training um, to be able to fill those roles. We've got to be able to develop some new uh, talent for, for those jobs in order to meet the demand. And we want to be that something else. We want to be that, that avenue for them to uh, learn new skills and be able to apply those skills in a career. It's not just a job, it's a career that's transferable. The labor force is aging and the new generation is not coming behind it. The idea is to give them a jump start where in a very short amount of time they can uh, develop their skills necessary to plug into the industry and then they can continue and advance. See everybody always feels like you have to be a, a doctor or a lawyer to really make it in the United States and and that workman that craftsman mentality that we used to have I mean we had the best craftsmen in the world and for a while that kind of died out because everybody wanted to be that that white collar in the office type of worker and we're losing that that middle ground and that middle ground that middle class is actually what supports the economy of the United States I mean that's what supports the economy of the world Houston the fourth largest city in America dynamic diverse with an economy that has outperformed almost every other metropolitan area in the country. The Houston economy has been widely acclaimed as one of the best in the country, if not in the world. Forbes magazine named Houston the coolest city in America, and they did that in, the, in July of last year, in the middle of the summer. Uh, a large part of that is the low taxes, uh, low regulations, and, and that has been the story of Houston's success. We now have to temper that, it seems to me, with investments that are absolutely critical if we're going to have a workforce that is prepared to succeed in the 21st century. And if we don't have that kind of workforce, it's hard to envision a prosperous future for youth. The middle class are the people who, who get out there and, and are hands-on, and they do get involved in the communities. They have their you know, community week where they have a barbecue outside and everybody comes over and you get to know each other and you go to some of these apartment complexes and all the kids are out there playing together. You know, when you, when you start crushing that, you start crushing a spirit. Houston is in the prime position to provide the workforce for billions of dollars in planned construction. Well, what I see for the next uh, 20 years for Houston uh, is, is solid growth. And we have seen about $50 billion in announced construction for the Texas Gulf Coast. I know that the medical center will continue to grow. We just saw Memorial Hermann uh, announce a $650 million uh, expansion of their their hospital here on the Texas Medical Center campus. So I think the future for growth uh, in the medical center, therefore, to help the economy of Houston is, is very bright. A resurging energy sector has spurred this expansion. Recent developments in natural gas production have resulted in the creation of new export facilities for liquefied natural gas on our Gulf Coast. This is not only a huge project in capital costs, but a really huge project for the state and local economies and the national economy. This project is only the second one in the, uh, to be built in the lower 48, so we're essentially like pioneers. A lot of people are needed. There's a big petrochem boom in manufacturing plants that are about to be built up in Houston, outside of Houston, all along the Gulf Coast. Huge boom there that's being fueled by the cheap natural gas and they need tons of construction workers, welders, for high paying jobs that, you know, they're just waiting for people to go into. New buildings are being built, their headquarters, their manufacturing facilities, and then there's a whole uh, sector of the economy that benefits from that. So it, it results in more restaurants, more retail shops, 
more cars that are bought, more houses that are built. And so we're in a really fortunate place to be a part of all that. We just have to be thoughtful and mindful um, of making sure we make good decisions as a, as a city and wise investments so that we uh, don't find ourselves in a less fortunate position at some point in the future. If you look at the number of employees, it's in aggregate. The 54 institutions that make up the Texas Medical Center have uh, over 100,000 employees. We see in this building close to 300 and plus thousand people just going to the ship channel. It's a very high density, a very high pace. You can imagine the logistics behind to process all those people. We have the population, we just have to get it right in terms of training those individuals to be ready to fill those jobs. The shortage of skilled manpower in this country keeps growing and growing every day. Uh, the baby boomers are retiring, uh, so we've got a lot of people leaving the workforce. Uh, it's going to be up to us and the rest of the apprenticeship programs to bring in more apprentices to obtain, obtain the skilled workers that are going to be needed for all the growth that we have in our city. The demands for workers to fill thousands of new jobs have community leaders taking steps to attract and train the highly skilled workers that will be needed to ensure vital infrastructures are built to the highest standards. We call them skilled trades for a reason. We need to uh, recognize the training and the experience that it takes to get a license to, uh, to do this. And the quality that's required uh, can be, can be really extraordinary. Uh, if you're going to protect the environment, you want to make sure those welds on that pipeline are done right. So there are lots of good jobs out there, but they require technical skills. They require one or two years after high school. And so that's the, that's the great challenge. The great challenge is to make sure that these kids are prepared, starting in kindergarten, to learn and to read and then to, to do ninth grade algebra, which is the key dividing line to, to access the technical jobs. It's fundamental to the success of Houston, I believe, is, is around education. And it has to start in, uh, you know, K through 12, but it's really K through 20. And, and there are opportunities at all levels. And, and when you get out of high school, or even if, if you decide not to go to a full four-year college or something like that, and you need that grasp, you need that, that direction, the IBEW has been, union has been fantastic. The, the people that they've sent us, I mean, from the, the military guys they sent us to, some guys who, who, as soon as they got out of high school, just had no idea what they wanted to do. They took them in, they taught them a craft. They didn't have to get student loans. They got done learning their craft and they owed no money to anybody. That, that's an incredible thing that you can go out, learn a craft, walk into something like us, go out and start hanging steel, become an electrician's, uh, an apprentice, and start working your way up the ranks, and you don't have a student loan? Well, you know, doctors don't walk in and automatically start making a million dollars. They, they start working in an emergency room. You know, lawyers don't immediately walk in and get Exxon as a client and start billing $300 an hour. They start at the very bottom doing all the research, but yet, they have these huge loans, they have these huge things hanging over their head that yes, they have to make a ton more money to take over and, and take care of the things that they have behind them before they really get to look forward. Look around, Houston is busy building everywhere and there's a growing need for more skilled workers than ever before. The Houston Electrical Training Center, sponsored by the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 716, and the National Electrical Contractors Association, produces the best trained electricians and telecommunications technicians in the country. The apprenticeship program is a five-year program. So the first-year apprentices start out a little bit over $14 an hour. By the time they graduate, they're making $28 an hour, plus the medical benefits and retirement. As long as you have reliable transportation, make it to the school nights, dedicate your yourself to it, it's only $400 tuition, they put you out there on the job before you even get to school. You're making money in your pocket. In this school, you get your education and you get your hands-on training, you get to learn, and that's what it's all about. Be a part of Houston's future. Call the Houston JATC at 713-649-2739 or go to HoustonJATC.com.
people would say Houston's the oil and gas center mm-hmm. of the world. Uh, I was just talking to the uh, energy minister of Scotland the other day, and his line was, uh, move over Wall Street, it's, it's Houston, that's the center. Houston is ground zero for the petrochemical industry. Four of the largest ethylene complexes in the world are located right here in Houston with a profit margin of 40 cents a pound on 60 cent ethylene. Everybody would like to have one of those plants and we have seen about 50 billion dollars in announced construction for the Texas Gulf Coast and we're going to see a push on the east side of town with this petrochemical construction. Baytown will be ground zero and uh, it's going to bring this huge influx of blue-collar workers into the Houston area over the next couple of years. Located on 385 acres of wooded land near Interstate 45 North and the Hardy Toll Road, ExxonMobil is nearing completion of its new corporate campus. The site has over 20 buildings and will house over 10,000 people when it opens in 2015. The project is codenamed Delta, the mathematical term for change, and it is indeed changing things for the surrounding community, with developers building shopping centers and new neighborhoods to serve a growing population. This is truly a global center for oil and gas exploration. George Mitchell, uh, who was the great innovator in shale, it turned out to be the biggest innovation in the oil fields uh, in a in hundred years and completely revolutionized uh, Uh, the way we think about oil and gas in the United States. So the U.S. has long been an oil and gas importer and it's projected to be that way for decades and decades, no end in sight. But then with the shale boom and everything that's happened, all of a sudden that's just flipped on its side almost overnight. Some of the import terminals that were being built up, some of the companies got ahead of the game and, and thought, you know, now's the time. Houston-based Freeport LNG is in the process of constructing a new liquefied natural gas export terminal capable of distributing 2 billion cubic feet of natural gas per day. The $14 billion investment will employ more than 3,500 workers during the construction phase and help create thousands of jobs related to natural gas production. Is this cheap natural gas gives us an enormous competitive advantage over the rest of the world in producing uh, uh, these petrochemicals. Well, there's been a revolutionary change in the U.S. energy market with the discovery of shale gas and shale liquids. We've gone from a country that was short natural gas to a country with more than a hundred years supply of today's technology. So it makes sense to create the jobs that come with developing all of that shale gas and send the gas to countries that really need it, allowing our country the opportunity to export to our allies and at the same time be able to uh, have enough natural gas demand so that we can truly become energy independent. That's quite remarkable. What's driving a lot of that is the is a lower cost natural gas, of course, uh, throughout the whole uh, industry. Outlook for Houston is looking really good. This forecast, this horizon of, of huge demand, how do we meet that demand in terms of being able to staff those projects with the skilled labor? We've got to be able to develop some new uh, talent for, for those jobs in order to meet the demand. And so what, what we're doing is, as an organization and as an industry is we're working with um, training providers, the community colleges, the ISDs, where we've got about 22 schools that we're working with to recruit some, some new talent into, into our industry. We have to make sure that, that whatever we do uh, facilitates and supports that quality worker by being qualified and being well-trained, they are more likely to be a much safer employee uh, and, and, and be able to do the things that are expected by those manufacturing facilities uh, in terms of doing a safe job, doing it well, and, and not having to do it over. Newtex is a cutting edge designer and manufacturer of LED lights. When they brought their main operations to Houston, company creator John Higgins turned to IBEW Local 716. Local 716 has been very good to come here and find out what our exact needs are and what we're looking for and identify the people 
um, that they have and that they can train to, to properly put in place. So when they walk in the door, they're ready to do what they need to do. Uh, the union does very good at training their people, pre-screening them. So it, it gives us a, a, a big edge. But we don't have to spend that money on those people of bringing them in and trying to retrain and actually trial and error through employees. Uh, the union provides us with very good quality people. If we have issues with an employee, we can call the union. The union addresses that for us. I see that that they seem to have a pure pride factor that, that it's not an individualism, it's a team. And, and it just, it makes it a much, much nicer place to work. The Houston Area Safety Council is a nonprofit organization created to provide safety training support to the petrochemical industry. With 65,000 square feet of training space in a state-of-the-art complex, the HASC trains over 1,500 people a day. The Houston Safety Council is an association that uh, we help our members to comply with uh, requirements from the government, like OSHA requirements, DOT, EPA requirements. Uh, the reason behind the existence of this association is a very noble principle. Number one is to keep people safe. You know, safety is very serious, and we take it very serious. You know, the, there is, it's, it's a good business to be safe. Accidents are very expensive. It's not just about training. It's also about the drug and alcohol policies, background screen policies, as well as uh, medical services. So we have diversified that scope and repurposed the association uh, in, in that regard. So the value proposition is that this training is reciprocal from company to company. So the training can be portable, and it can go from one region to another, or from one employer to another employer. The requirements to get access for these refineries are multiple. It's customized for the site. So they learn the uh, principles of, uh, and rules and regulations for that particular site. So downstairs in that multimedia lab, we have over 1,500 different requirements that they can take. Depends where they're going or depends on the job description. You know, one side don't fit all. The sky is the limit. You know, the, in reality, you can limit yourself if you don't get develop that uh, interest for the industry. But um, when you get into that, you can diversify so much. You know, you're never gonna get bored. There is always new things to learn, and it's a vast universe of opportunities that we have in the petrochemical industry. If they're well trained in one area to work in one plant, then they should be well trained to work in another. Um, and so that's what, that's what our overall goal is, to just to make sure that we have that quality and that safety in place. In today's economy, do you think it is necessary to get an education beyond high school, or are there many ways to succeed with no more than a high school degree? And 75%, three-fourths of all Houstonians said, you've got to get education beyond high school. Michael E. DeBakey High School, we gave them uh, a couple of acres of land to build a brand new state-of-the-art high school. And this is a high school that's focused on uh, young kids who are interested in the life sciences, either medical school, dental school, nursing school, uh, becoming a PhD scientist. We believe by moving them from uh, a campus which is which is just across 288. Um, it's close to the medical center, the central part of the medical center, but now we're, they're going to be building a, a more urban campus that will be embedded right in the, mid, uh, in the middle of all these great institutions so that the children and young adults can walk to the, to the clinics, to the labs, to do their internships, their research, uh, and we believe their uh, uh, experience will be enhanced. So that's an important component to making the economy of Houston better is through training and education from early level all the way through the graduate levels. I see a, a much larger camaraderie uh, amongst union workers in my facility. They come together and, and they mesh very well together, they work very well together, and they work as a, as a unit. That's why the, the military guys who walk in here immediately feel very comfortable. The union people, especially the IBEW here in Houston, uh, is very much 
they're very much on the ground floor of understanding what it takes to run a business. And that's really kind of how they modeled around the contract they gave us, the, the employees they send us, are modeled directly to my business. We're here at the Sheldon Reservoir today to help repair this pier to make it ADA compliant. Uh, so some of those with disabilities can still come out here and fish, enjoy the weather, enjoy the uh, atmosphere out here at the uh, Sheldon Reservoir. The sun's out, you've got a good breeze, and these guys are out here dedicated to help provide this opportunity for folks to come out and experience the reservoir. Uh, so basically it's all the unions joined together, work with Union Sportsman Alliance uh, to do what we can. This pier uh, definitely had some broken boards, uh, a little bit unsafe, uh, so we wanted to repair it. We help uh, those in need as far as air conditioning, electric work, and some low-income housing, uh, especially some of our retirees and some of our older people that, that don't have a lot of help, don't have a lot of assistance. Uh, pretty much anything uh, happening in the city of Houston or around it, uh, we try to be a part of it. With a thousand people a day moving here, and with over 20 educational institutions, several who have curriculums that are geared specifically for the industry to, to retrain and reskill workers um, for that specific skill set, I think we're positioned better than anyone, anywhere, to be able to catch up and to retrain and skill the workers we need to be able to, to fill those jobs. New Skills at Work is J.P. Morgan Chase's response to, frankly, the global workforce challenges. While this is a, a huge challenge in Houston, it's not specific or exclusive to us. And as a firm, we see it as a great opportunity to really help the, our clients and the communities where we do business. So um, J.P. Morgan Chase has committed $250 million over five years to help close this mid-skilled gap. And we're doing that in the communities um, where we do business, like Houston, by forming partnerships across organizations and across institutions and helping build and fund programs that we know work. It's a great thing because it will help our clients who are the employers and it will help the community and the individuals that are in those communities. The IBW is uh, probably one of the only electrical apprenticeship programs. Uh, so trying to educate our youth, giving them other options uh, to, to learn a skill and also provide for the family. Our apprenticeship program is more for those that actually want to be electricians. Uh, you really have to be serious about the trade. Uh, we have strict policy standards and procedures that they have to follow, uh, as, as well as educational hours uh, that they have to attend in school. And they also have on-the-job training uh, to make sure they're a skilled electrical journeyman when they turn out of our apprenticeship program. Uh, we believe in partnering with the businesses, believe in partnering with our employers, we work collaboratively together uh, to make sure we have successful projects. Uh, our motto is to work the best we can to work ourselves into another job. Uh, so trying to make sure we're productive, efficient, skilled, safety, uh, drug free, certified, and trained to do our work. Uh, and at the same time, partner with businesses to give back to the community and give back to charities. They want to bring back the craft of manufacturing, whether it's building cabinets, building buildings, wiring a building, and those middle class jobs are starting to come back with that mentality. And that's what's actually working on the economy. It's not the uber rich that are out spending their money, and it's not the, the super poor people that are out spending their money. It's those craftsmen, it's those middle class people that now, as we're developing more jobs, they're getting better pay. With that better pay, they're out buying more cars and they're buying more homes. So you see that economy being lifted, but that economy can't lift without that middle class. You kill that middle class, you not only kill the, the, the economy in the United States, you kill the economy of the world. The International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 716, has been providing great careers in Houston for over 100 years. I had a dream to have a big family and live the American dream, you know, have a house, car, and, you know, provide for my family. I like, uh, I like putting pride into my work. You know, I give my 100% and I, uh, I do the best I can and I feel that 
if if I'm not happy with it, I know the customer is not going to be happy with it. So I like to give my all. I mean, it, it can open up many doors just starting out working, you know, as an electrician. So the union, they're they're fair across the board. You know, all we concentrate is on our work. I mean, it was the best move I made in my life. What do you think, Baker? Yeah, that for sure. The best two decisions in my life is uh, marrying my wife here. The second best thing is uh, going to the union. I'm a part of something that's bigger. Houston is a great place to experiment and to try new things and determine what works. And when we find things that work, we then have the ability to scale them up and deploy them more broadly across our own community. But there's lots of examples of um, success that's happened in Houston that has been uh, deployed more broadly across the U.S. The charter school movement is a great example of that. And so much of that success started right here in Houston. And I think there's countless examples of Houston as an innovative city um, that tries things and, um, and then gets adopted elsewhere. Houston is a, a city of entrepreneurs and smart people doing all kinds of exciting, interesting things and building businesses. And so it's so fun to be a part of that and help those businesses solve problems, capitalize on opportunities, grow their business that creates opportunity for other people. Energy, healthcare, we have the two biggest here in Houston as well as the things that support them. Real estate is booming. For the first time ever, we made the top five international investment list for real estate. We have land here that's affordable. We're 2% below the average on cost of living in Houston. So you can afford it here. You can just go down the list of all the companies that are expanding, that are locating. And if you notice in their expansion, um, they're staying in Houston. And they're just, in fact, finding areas where they can grow and plan for further expansion. When they're buying these lands, they're getting a little bit farther out, but they're getting extra land because they anticipate continued growth, continue optimism about our economy, about the world economy, and to expand. That's a great sign. We are the uh, head of the American oil industry, and in many ways, especially in oil services, we are the center of the global operation uh, in, in for oil services. Houston, Texas is your answer. We, we've got some of the best colleges in the world. We've, we've got a great support system. The, the highways, the railroad, the infrastructure, uh, our port, which is ever growing, is just, it does nothing but bring opportunity. And with opportunity brings natural growth. And with natural growth, it, you just, you start developing. But it never loses that comfortable slipper feeling of being at home.